49.1% of the American Association of Individual Investors were bullish or are bullish on the next six months in the stock market as of the final week of January. 24.5% bearish and 264 neutral. As of right now, after this past week, does the new record high have any impact on your short-term outlook for stocks? And 46% said it made them somewhat optimistic, 26% somewhat pessimistic, 15 no impact, and beyond from there. Very interesting. Very interesting. That's not, we didn't even get in any charts yet. We didn't even get in to the candlesticks, but happy to have you here. This is the Stock Trends channel. First things first, we're looking at the charts here on TradingView. We'll leave a link to TradingView to get $15 off any of the plans in the video description box down below if you are ever interested or looking to upgrade. Check it out. So we are looking right now at the uptrend in the S&P. Yep, cool spy is doing its thing. As I speak, this blue little line right here, check this out. This in the after hours is making a new all time high. How many times is it gonna make an all time high? It seems like it made an all time high many, many days in January. Obviously as we're breaking out, fair enough. But it seems like what's occurring now as we start off February with the first day in the after hours hitting an all-time high on SPY, the S&P 500 ETF. So the trend is really, it's really simple, you know, from what we have. The trend's up. That's it. It's not, it's not that complicated. It's just, it's up. It is up until it's not. A couple things to also touch on. QQQ, not at all-time highs. This is not at all-time highs. This took a decent hit with some of the earnings that we had on Tuesday. Had a pretty nice drawdown on Wednesday and recovered good, but not necessarily back to all-time highs. QQQ is still a few dollars off its all-time high, maybe four or five dollars off its all-time high as we speak. DIA, the Dow Jones ETF, right up along its all-time highs, very, very close. Now, IWM is where we have, you know, that divergence right now. This did look pretty tough or weak, I should say. First, you know, where I guess to finish off Wednesday and Thursday morning, but it has rebounded nicely and it's right back up into the middle of its consolidation that it's been in. I don't want to say it's been in here for all, like, you know, months. It hasn't, but it was in here for a while and then it broke out below and then it came right back up into this area again. So it's in the chop zone. It seems like a uh, high volume note as well. A lot of volume has been exchanged at this 195 area on the Russell 2000, but that's nowhere near its all time highs. Nowhere near. The January high is 205.50s, and you're looking at an all-time high up over 244. So nowhere near it. It's got a long way to go, about 50 bucks, give or take, roughly, just shy, uh, on IWM, the Russell. That's cool, but that's not, you know, that, that's great. What else is the story? The bigger story, I think, to dive into is the 10-year. This is pretty cool. I mean, no, I don't want to say cool. It, just, it is what it is, but pretty impressive of a move. You had what looked to be, you know, kind of trending back up, doing its thing, and then it gets slammed right out of that. And it's funny when the timing of this happened, it actually it kind of came the days leading up to or the day before, it really, and then and then really the day of the Fed meeting where Jerome Powell pretty much came out and said that we don't think we're going to raise rates in March. He just blatantly said that. Uh, there's some quotes, but he pretty much said, no, no, no guarantees, but he pretty much said that. Now, once he did say that, we saw projections move from roughly 50% chance that we're going to get a cut, 25 basis points, now 37.5% chance, 62% chance they're going to leave their leave rates where they are. Seems like they're pretty concerned about uh, making any, you know, any potential move to dare, dare they say, you know, let inflation creep back in. And, you know, by putting it out, putting us out to March or sorry, May being the first, you know, cut many, many months from now, not many, many, a couple months from now, you know, you have more time for them to test the data and for more time for the higher rates to really dig their feet in even further, dig their heels in even further and do what they need to do to get inflation down. seems like that's essentially done. So the inflation war, I think we can all oh, but say it's done. It's not going to be a headline story by any means, uh, unless some major event occurs that gets it back in, into the into the forefront. The dollar, really kind of weird price action. 
I guess. It's just choppy, very, very weird. Upper wicks, lower wicks. So right now it's down towards the bottom of its recent range. But, I mean, we got to see some continuation down or a bounce right back. We'll see what happens. It hasn't done a lot really in half a month. And even before that, it was choppy as well. So watching to see that if, that, if we get any follow through to the downside or upside on the dollar. But it's towards the bottom end of its recent range. And then beyond that, you know, you have some you know, room down towards, you know, 102 which is the bottom of the range prior to that to this range. So uh, we'll see if the dollar ends up hanging out there. Now, bigger picture, though, I do want to touch on gold and silver because it's now starting to get a little more interesting here. And um, some that I was thinking about as, as an idea, but look at this, this weekly chart here on gold, right? So you've got clear resistance above this blue line. You had a downtrend that we were now breaking. Here's back to the daily chart. Breaking the downtrend, here's that resistance. Yes, we broke that resistance briefly for like, you know, right when we opened up trading back on a Sunday night in early December and then immediately sold off. However, you know, you came back and you built a nice higher low. So all we could say is strength, right? Built a nice higher low and now gold's starting to, you know, percolate a little bit. So as you zoom out on these charts, I like, the, I like to look at the monthly chart. I want to get rid of all these lines. I like to look at the monthly chart. And I say to myself, with this monthly chart view that I see, what do we think? Like, yes, obviously we are at an area of resistance. Don't get me wrong. This is an area of resistance. But you're into this area of resistance, right? In an up, underlying uptrend and putting in higher lows. So you, that's a good sign. It's bullish for now, and it's it's a good look. Obviously, knowing we're at resistance is, you can say, a concern. But watching this one closely, because this could be setting up gold for a sizable move. I mean, we you know you're talking about you know something that just hanging out here. Like that's a strong little move potentially setting up on gold for the next leg. We'll see but it's really close to all-time highs. That is one of the main watches in my book over the coming days and weeks, probably more weeks because the bigger time frames I was looking at was the monthly, the monthly chart. So you're probably looking at weeks to months versus a uh, day-to-day, but could become gold could become headline news here very, very shortly. I wouldn't be surprised if it, especially if it breaks out. Silver, let's get into that. Not much. Uh, wouldn't be surprised, obviously, if that follows suit closely after gold, but it's right in this consolidation. It just hasn't been doing much. It's just waiting on some direction. Maybe we're getting to get the dollar to make a move and maybe we'll get some better movement on silver. Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. Let's pull her up. Bouncing beautifully off the 38.5 level. Now it's pushing back up. It's consolidating a little bit now under this 44 to 45 area. And I'm not surprised that's the case. You got a high volume node right here, as we see right on the right hand side, the volume profile. And if we can break about 44K, that's towards the top of this, that's not gonna be as tough from a volume perspective to push through. We could see price move faster through this area if it can break through. So that's what I'm watching on Bitcoin. We shall see. Now, talk about some earnings. Obviously this can change, a lot can change, but as I'm filming this video, we had some earnings drop. One of the notable earnings was Meta. I believe they announced a 50 cents uh, per share dividend along those lines, increasing buybacks, yada, yada, yada. But I mostly type primarily will focus on the charts here. That is an absolute massive boner candle. That's just straight up what it is. What, what else can you say? Huge move. So initial reactions to Meta's earnings are very, very strong. Not only did it just blast right back up over 400, broke a new all-time high, but it did so with authority, and now it currently trades over 450 in the after hours. Jump back out to the weekly charts. If you were a meta dip buyer some point in October of 2022, you are looking back and saying that may have been one of the most incredible buys of your entire life. <laughs> That's what it seems like from a timing perspective. Now, obviously, you know, who knows with the timing, you know, you never know. But it just so happens that that timing was incredible if you happen to be buying into that dip. Um, meta from those lows, uh, based off of now where we are in the after hours, is up approximately 400 plus percent 
Now, from absolute low to top. So obviously, yeah, no one's going to capitalize the entire thing. But from that low, 400% move. And that's not that, I mean, we are not even talking about, oh, three years. No, no, we're talking about like a year, like a couple months, not even. Like literally not even a year and a half. Less than a year and a half ago, Meta was down <laughs> under $100. It was actually down under 90 bucks. Now it's over 450 Congrats to the longs, but that's the move. So absolutely incredible. The thing has been a beast. It's been strong as heck. It's strong again, and it continues to show strength. I mean, things are just, just they just keep going. That's all we could say. Uh, Amazon also had earnings. Now, Amazon in the after hours, we'll pull up that in a second, is up substantially. Not as much as Meta, but it's up a lot. Amazon, if we jump back to the weekly charts, I'm just going to mark off some levels. The all-time high on Amazon is up around 189, give or take. And Amazon currently in the after hours is around 173. So very nice move there. If Amazon, we take a peek at the after hours movement. You are talking about approximately a 9% gain as I film this. It's up to one over 173, hit just shy of 175. It closed the day down under 160. So very strong movement there on Amazon as well. The interesting thing about Amazon to me is that you now are going to be right smack dab, potentially in the middle. We'll see what happens tomorrow of this area of consolidation. We were getting up into that area, but now you're really into that, which Amazon consolidated from like 150 up to about 185 for from July 2020. All the way, you can even put that into March 2022. So a long time, almost two years of consolidation there. So Amazon now getting up in that area again, which we've seen a lot of price, a lot of shares exchange there uh, with not a lot of direction for some time. We'll see if it gets stuck there again, bigger picture. And then last but not least is Apple. Apple also had earnings. Now, of course, there's more than this. There's more companies that had earnings. These are just the biggest names that I wanna to touch on because these are the ones that move the markets the most. Apple in the after hours is down. This one is down. Uh, they're not all up. This one is down as I speak. It could change, but it's only down 1.25%. 1 1.1, 1 .1, yeah, around 1.2%. 1 it was up, it spiked up, it dipped down, but so far the reaction in Apple has not been as insane as you have seen in Meta and Amazon, which are up huge. Apple's movement is quite small, relatively speaking. The highs in the after hours... Uh, don't even have Apple at all. Don't even put Apple at all time highs and the lows. Don't put it that much lower than where it is. So as we speak, not as strong, but again, hanging out nonetheless. Overall uptrend there. Sure. Yep. Uh, not nearly as strong though on Apple compared to Meta and Amazon, how they look. So want to touch on those. Yeah. I mean, I'm, you know, it's a, it's an interesting environment I and mean, th that's all we can say. If I jump over to QQQ again, right. Seeing the strength that we're seeing there. You know, very strong move in the after hours. It, it's, I don't want to say it's perplexing because it, it is, it is if you, if you have a bias, you know, this is what's happening. So the question now is, do we rotate? Do we get rotation? Do we see, you know, bullish sentiment, right? Keep pushing us higher and then in and spreading out because these stocks that have been going up are the ones that have been going up for some time the most. Now, do they keep going up? They could. If they don't keep going up or if they slow down, do you see that pick up elsewhere? And that's the question. So quickly want to pull over fear and greed. This, if we have a good day, you know, on Friday, this number could pop back up into extreme greed. It actually fell back, at, fell back out of extreme greed into the greed section or the greed category, uh, partially due to a little bit of breath. Well, not even a little bit, breath, look at breath. This is as we finished off 2023. This is, I think, notable. We, when, when you look at stock market breath, it's showing you... Overall, under the surface, are a lot of stocks going up? Is it broad? This number being larger, being more of a broad rally? And this number's actually been coming down. Believe it or not, this number's been coming down so far in 2024, despite the stocks we just talked about going up and the S&P, NASDAQ, Dow hitting all-time highs, right? And the Russell not, and Russell kind of doing the opposite, is kind of your, is showing you that mid small caps growth names the stuff that has not been as strong over the past you know since the bear market lows on the S&P at least you know back in 2022 that's not been what's getting picked up if it does that is potentially the opportunity if it does <laughs> that's where you could see some of the most the more sizable returns you would think 
uh, with, with less risk. So that's the question. And that's where I kind of leave you here with IWM. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Do we see catch up in IWM this year? Is IWM setting up for its rally uh, and, and playing catch up to we've seen in the S&P, the Dow, the NASDAQ? Let me know in the comment section below. Leave any other chart requests you have down there. Curious of that. And uh, with that said, thanks so much for watching. Make sure you are subscribed if you want more of these videos. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.